Here we go, ready to go racing with the NASCAR k Pro Series West. Not gonna take long to complete a lap here tonight on this short track. Bullring style as we go racing early on and Nicole Behar in the 33 already dealing with a little bit of a loose race car. Mayhew looking fantastic on the outside. Uh, be able to stay out there on this tight little bullring. It's pretty impressive, uh, got the lead. Todd, we talk about keeping those tires on the car. You really have to think about driving like you're on ice all night, don't you? You have to be easy in and off that throttle. Exactly, Ralph. So a little bit of brake, not a whole lot, just a little bit, because if you use a lot, it ends up making the car push through the middle, you wear the right front out. Uh, easy to the throttle so you don't spin the rear tires and, and burn the rear tires off. Uh, right now, Mayhew's out front, and he's trying to get a good pace, get a rhythm, not over abuse those tires. Craig Persley in the 26 holds down second and takes over the lead. And a caution, first one of the night. What a great pass by Brandon McReynolds, son. Using those lap cars as a pick. You know, when you put yourself in that position, you never know what's gonna happen. If the inside guy's gonna go over the outside, but you take that opportunity, that chance, and it worked out for him. Jack Chisholm in the 38 out of British Columbia brings out the first caution of the night. And that'll slow the field down. Give everybody a chance to catch their breath. Just on the bottom by himself, Todd. Yeah, I, you know, I think he, uh, what happens here, especially on a tight racetrack like this, the cars want to push through the middle of the corner and you go back the throttle, you start for going to the outside of Persley. Can he get into the top three? Boy, what a great race. Yeah, and it's helping make you out. Oh, caution, caution is out on the racetrack. Only our second caution of the night. And I believe this one's for Giannone. Yep, there he is up along the top of the racetrack. The 54 at a Colorado Springs, the MGP connecting rods, Toyota. Now it's gonna get real interesting. These tires are gonna cool down. Guys can cool their brakes off. It's gonna be a great race. Oh, Anthony just lost it on his own up there in one and two. One thing's interesting about this racetrack, there's no outside wall. And he was, you know, if there was an outside wall there, he'd be probably putting a front clip on the car. So it's, it's nice that it doesn't happen, saves these guys some money. Able to catch their breath, think about what they want to do, assess the situation with the tires, and get ready to go green again. We're gonna have the final 20 or so laps when Fox Sports 1 returns to Idaho. Well, we started with 150 laps on the board, but not many left, and Dylan Lupton is in a position to make something happen here tonight. Heather DeBow with more on the driver behind the wheel of the number nine. During the caution, Dylan Lupton's crew chief came over the radio and told him he has done an awesome job and has run a great race and that he needs to keep it up. Lupton is looking for his second career win in the k and West Series here at Stateline Speedway. Here we go. Maybe the best shot Lupton has had with this restart. He's got the bottom groove, he's got his nose out front, and he's got the lead. He drove it down in that corner and moved Mayhew up to the third groove. Mayhew getting in the back of him, he didn't like that very much. Here's Persley to the inside. Oh man, all kinds of contact, and Lupton and Mayhew go spinning, and so does Persley. And one has been mostly a caution-free night has suddenly got extremely aggressive. We knew on this restart they were going to be aggressive going after it, trying to get that win, and uh, it didn't work out for them. Boy, Lupton cannot be excited about that at all. No, he, he, moved, per, or he moved Mayhew up when he went to pass him, and, and David didn't like that and got down to the next corner, and, and he did something about it. So it was a fair payback in your mind. Well, I, I don't, I try not to do those things. I mean, that's, that's racing. I mean, you know, Lupton moved him up. There's no doubt about it. But 
you know, David, he just flat out got in the back of him, which he didn't really turn him. I mean, you can see he, he did a great job, but you're not going to go down to this racetrack three wide like this and everybody make it. And David, he saw Persley down there on the inside, and he got in the, up and on the outside. Wow, and the six of Bickford did a great job of cutting to the inside and not running into Mayhew. Well, if you watch that closer, uh, Lupton tried to hold Mayhew down on the on the straightaway, and, and that's what got David sideways. And when David got sideways, he had to correct. And when he did, he got into Lupton. Look at Bickford on the brakes here. And then he, in all that smoke, just turns and misses him. Did a great job. That's very easy to, to panic there and slide front tires, hit the brakes too hard, slide the front tires and, and get into the wreck, and, and Bickford did a great job. So this is going to change the lineup. Persley's going to move to the front, and McReynolds is back in play now, Todd. He's moved up to second. Brandon's in the right position. I, I just don't know if he's got the tires to, to make it work. Well, we'll line him up, get ready to go back to green and see if the contact continues. Shaheen, Todd Bedine, and Heather DeBoe with you. State Line Speedway in Idaho. k m Pro Series West on a quarter mile bull ring. Been a pretty smooth night, but you know it's seven to go on a track this size. We're about to swap some paint. Persley's looking for a win, and the kid on the inside, James Bickford, going for a career best finish and maybe his first win. He's got a good car. I, I thought that he's been saving his tires the best of everybody. We can see if he can do something with Persley. Back to green. Oh, Bickford spinning the tires. Slide that six all the way down to turn one. Persley grabs the lead. Bickford's got great forward drive right now. If he's going to get under Persley, it's going to be up off the corner getting underneath them. And how about Nicole Behair in the 33 running in third? And Brandon McReynolds right behind her. Nicole running the bottom, blocking Brandon. It's, uh, that's, she's done a great job the whole race of, of keeping those tires on her. Here comes Bickford, sizing up Persley down the back stretch, side by side and into three. Good, clean racing. How long? Not very. Contact coming down the front chute. Bickford's car is really rotating, gets up off the corner, and he makes the pass. Yeah, Persley cuts back to the inside. I don't think Persley can make that work. Yeah, he, his car is just, he's wore them tires out. They're hot and slick. I think Bickford did a great job the whole race of keeping those tires on it. McReynolds trying to take over third. James Bickford. One lap remaining in his first career win on the horizon. A career best of fourth coming into the night. He saved his equipment, saved his tires. James Bickford comes off of four for his first career Keenan Pro Series West win. What an outstanding run. That was fantastic. Kept, he kept his cool the whole race. He kept those tires on it. He knew what he was doing back there. He, he just kept his cool. And he had a little bit of luck, too, because when the guys are crashing in front of him, he did a great job of avoiding them in the middle of all that smoke, and it was in perfect position to capitalize here. Well, look at the problems for Nicole Bay here back behind. She had a top four going. Car gets loose coming off the final corner. Oh, she lost a couple of spots in there, but still did a great job tonight. In the middle of all, that was Jairo Avia in the 39. Havens was in there too, but boy, everybody's gonna be talking about the great night behind the wheel by James Bickford, our winner here tonight. 